Good morning. Today is August 21st, 2023. You know, this weekend I heard somebody talking about Labor Day and I thought, what are they talking about Labor Day for? That's at the end of summer. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't you think as makers that our year just flies by. There's always, always something to do. Today I'm working on... My husband's in the kitchen. Today I'm working on a cotton candy table runner from Villa Rosa Designs. Really simple. It requires 16 5-inch charm squares. So I went through and found a I picked up, I didn't find one, <laughs> I picked up a charm pack at um, Ruth's Stitchery in Colorado Springs. It's still early, guys. My brain. And I love this table runner pattern. It is so cute. I can just, every season, can't you just see it in red and greens, which is what I'm doing, and uh, red, white, and blue. So pretty. That's what I'm working on this morning. I think I need to be drawing some lines on the back of these squares. Pretty sure. Or I could eyeball it. It's not like it's a Lori Holt pattern or an Elizabeth Hartman pattern where it's got to be, you know, perfect. <laughs> you don't want to mess those up. We spent the weekend at a RV resort in Crystal Beach, Texas. It's called, uh, it's a Margaritaville franchise. If you live outside the United States, I would think everybody's heard of Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Well, there's a big franchise of hotels, restaurants. Anyway, very, very nice. And we met some super nice people. That RV resort is on the end of a peninsula that uh, reaches out, it's on the corner of the Trinity Bay, the eastern side of the Trinity Bay and the Gulf of Mexico, South Texas. And you can get there coming from the west, either by going into Galveston and taking the ferry across. What am I doing? Or Y'all, I would not be eyeballing this if I didn't have this quarter inch seam tape. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. When I was at Ruth's Stitchery, she asked me about this. She came up to me with a roll of it in her hand from Cluck Cluck Sew. She says, is this what you use? I said, yes, you want that. <laughs> I keep the point of the square just to the outside of the red line. That's how you can eyeball that. Anyway, so we'd never been there before. And y'all, when we travel, I'm the navigator. Oh, if you're wondering, I have already run all of these charm squares under a five inch ruler and squared them because five inches is not five inches is not five inches. So we'd, not, we'd never been there before, and the way, the way we went was to drive completely through Houston, eastbound, completely through Houston, and get over to a little town exit for Winnie, Texas, on 124, and then went south, and then came back. 17 miles to get to the end of the peninsula. Well, my, my bus driver was not real happy about that. <laughs> he, he kept wanting to turn, you know, the, the GPS kept saying, turn south on 45 in Houston, and it wanted to take us through Galveston, which is the most probably fuel efficient way. But a bus 
across that's 42 feet long and we've got we're towing a F, Ford F-150 truck so uh, we're, we're pretty long we're close to 60 maybe over 60 feet for towing hey Siri set a timer for 30 minutes 30 minutes counting down so I love that feature do y'all love that if you've got one of these oh all my life has been so much more ordered I use it in cooking constantly why is there something under my well come to find out there were things there's things about taking the ferry that we had never considered okay so one of them is the tides. If you're in a car, it's not a big deal. You can take the ferry across back and forth. Our bus is pretty low to the ground, especially in the back. It doesn't like going over railroad tracks. So if the tide is low, I don't know if you've ever taken a ferry. Most of y'all probably have. I've only done it a couple of times. Um, but when you drive off the ferry, the when you get to the other side, there's a big metal flap that's laying flat, and it flaps over onto the edge of the boat. Okay, flaps onto the edge of the boat or the ferry, whatever. Well, if the tide is low, this flap is pretty angled. If the tide's high, the flap is pretty flat, right? So with the tide's low, you've got to get up and over that and that would scrape the bottom of my bus. And so we were talking to people there that um, came over on the ferry, and oh, it's great, blah, 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 but they're towing, they had a Winnebago too, but it, it was a mini Winnie, so it was a bumper pull. I think that's fine for them, because that bumper pull is pretty high off the ground. We were talking to a guy who was driving a bus, an Integra, a big one like ours. And he said, no, nah, I don't take that ferry. <clears throat> it was real hard not to look at Keith and go, told you so. <laughs> but I've learned grace. <laughs> I just, I was worried about our length on the ferry. That's what I was worried about. <clears throat> You know, we're having it be, that bus is, y'all, it's the size of a semi, 18-wheeler semi. It's ginormous. And I don't, I just, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable on the ferry. It wasn't that far. And then the people who did take it told us it's the same amount of time. The distance might be longer to drive. But on a good day, you might, where there's no weight at the ferry, you might save 10 minutes. And that's it. He said, now you're, in our rig, we're better off. So, learning experience. So we came back the Winnie way, we call it, and it was fine. One of y'all were asking me about my, my little ironing station over here. Y'all, this is just one of these little carts that, can you see? Now I've got a I've got this in my Amazon store. This is a steady Betty. And a steady Betty. This is actually a woolly Betty. So steady Betty, this is an old thing. If you're new to sewing and embroidery or whatever. So this is a foam. And this foam keeps your pieces cool when you iron them, but it's a piece of wood. Okay, it's got some kind of wood in here. And then it has wool on the other side when wool became all the trend for ironing. So this thing's only 13 by 13. It's a little small and it will, sometimes it will drop in like that. Well, I ordered another one and it's waiting for me at the UPS store to go pick it up. And Valerie, yesterday after the live, she told me, she says, you know they make an insert to put in here so it'll hold. And I said, well, I didn't know that, but I'd rather have another Steady Betty. 
<laughs> so I, what's waiting for me is one that is 13 by 17. So that's going to be the perfect size. And then this is a Cricut mini press. And I love this thing. The heat is very even. And it doesn't have any steam in it. I don't like to quilt piece with steam. Okay. But when I steam on the woolly side, this is so hot right now I can't grab it. When you iron on the on the, the Betty side, it the foam absorbs the heat and you don't burn your fingers. It is so nice. Now I'm going to cut these corners off and they're going to go in the trash can and I don't want to hear a word about it, all right? <laughs> Y'all get all wound up. Now I, I bought, see how perfect those come out? Look at that. Those are perfect. That's beautiful. I bought another cart for the motorhome. And it's a C-shaped table on wheels. And it is for my ironing station in the motorhome. I've got to figure out how it's going to travel. Probably laying on top of the bed. But I'm really excited to get that one moving. This steady bedding will go on top of that. Yeah. So I got to I got to do these. Anyway, what else did we do? Oh, I just found something I've been missing for a long time, years. Is this St. James Cross pendant that I got. It's from James Avery, which is a silver jeweler here in Texas. And uh, they have an online presence. Beautiful stuff. Anyway, I've been looking for this. I even went to go buy another one, and they quit making it. Well, that was the Lord saving me money. But this morning, I was looking to declutter a little uh, a travel bag that we haven't used in a long time. I've had it since 2007, and it has seen better days. The inside is cracking. It's plastic, and it's cracking, and it's flaking off, and it looks terrible. And So I... Uh, I'm going to sit like this. There we go. Strap my ironing table here. So I pulled it down from the shelf, and I haven't used it in a long time. Pulled it down from the shelf, and I looked inside, and there was a little travel lotion. And um, there was a little, one of the little jewelry pouches from James Avery in there, and I said, Oh! What's in there? And I looked, y'all, there was about three charms, three silver charms in there. Turned out, I was just, I, and the cross was one of them. I was so excited. I used to wear this all the time in my, pre, in my early videos, and I haven't been wearing it in a while, and that's because I couldn't find it. I've been wearing my little sewing machine. I can't. I can't wear charm bracelets. Can you guys? I can't. I know ladies that do, and they're just bangling all over the place. And y'all, I, especially sewing, I never wore one when I was in the corporate world because I type constantly. And um, I, a lady I met on, on the ship on Sew and Sail, 11 and 12, Candace, she loves them. She's got charms everywhere. She goes in and gets them at those little jewelry shops all over the Caribbean. She likes those little Disney charms. Okay. Yes, I know. I could sew a quarter of an inch away and make another little half square triangle. Y'all, that's not how I roll. Okay. Even if I did it, I don't have any plans to use it. I don't have anywhere to store it. So I'm not going to apologize 
for thread and fiber that I don't use. It's okay. There are bigger fish to fry, you guys. I'm about finished with my fabric storage reorganization. It's, it's taken me a minute to figure it all out, but I'm about finished with it. So I will, I, I shot the first half of a video showing how, what it looked like, and now what it's going to look like. I had so much stuff, you guys, and I've moved it several times, and uh, didn't know what I had, couldn't find what I had. I think I have solved the problem, but I'm not quite finished with it yet. Uh, our little dog, Frito, she did so good on the trip. She was wonderful. Hardly slowing down, hard to get up and down the stairs. The weather, yeah. Really hot, but you're on the coast, so it's a good breeze. And we kind of, we've learned how to manage it. Okay. These look good. Yeah. Uh, no. There we go. That's how that'll work. Oh, that's pretty. I can kind of see it in the camera. I can, you know how they tell you to take a picture to see value? Okay, so I can see this is the dark one and these three are light. Huh. That's not what I see. I see two greens and two lights, but the camera sees it differently. So I may not put these four together when it's all said and done, but we'll see. Just on the fly. So yeah, I'm working on uh, adding a feature to the PowerToolsWithThreadStore.com website to allow private lessons on how to do paper applique to machine embroidery design. Am I doing this right? I'm just sewing along, not even looking. Nope. Not. Not doing this right. Good thing I checked. <laughs> oh, that would have been, I'd have been like, what am I doing? You don't put it on all four corners, Becky. You only put it on two corners. Okay. These are done. Next. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I ordered a little, it's a, um, app for my Shopify store site that will allow you guys to make us, you can choose an appointment time that I'm available. And I got, I got it all configured pretty well, but I can't get it to look right on the, on the customer page. So I'm going to have to reach out to their customer service today to the developer and go, hey, what gives? How come I don't see that on my, I'm paying $10 a month for it the ability to be able to do that. I did everything like they showed, but who knows? Oh, it's always something, isn't it? Always. Designs by Juju came out with some new, cute, like, fall designs and, um, I wanted to make something, I really, I really want to seasonally make pretty things for my son and daughter-in-law's home. So that's, that's where this is going. I don't know what her tastes are like. 
and don't care. I'm going to make what I want to make. <laughs> Y'all, I have table runners out my ears. I got plenty. So. I kind of wondered if she didn't put my stuff out, you know, before I got there. Do y'all ever think that? <laughs> if so, that was very thoughtful. If not, that's great. It's a win-win, right? Can't get all hung up on that stuff. They've got, they, they entertain at their house quite a bit with the church. Their house is really big and it's got a big great room. And it's large enough, the great room is large enough for their living area and um, their, the table that the family eats at, which is a, a family of five. And then there's a giant island in the kitchen that, they, that she serves from. And then there's enough, like a, a smaller eating area where they put a kid's picnic table. Not a picnic table, but it's a kid's, th that's where they have the kids eat. And it's a, it's a standard size bench type table. Benches on either side. And that's, I think this would look great there. Because they don't eat there all the time, so it'd be nice to have it, have something on it. They only eat there when, the, when they have, uh, you know, people from the church and they bring their kids. Really enjoyable visit. Oh, y'all, my mother called the other day. She's 82. And uh, she's complaining about the cable. Not the cable, the internet going up. Well, it's over $200 a month for um, phone, internet, TV, and all that, I think. No, I think the phone bill's so. Anyway, they had Spectrum. You know, and they're, they're in their 80s. He's, her husband's 84, 85, something like that. And then mom's, at, she'll be 82 on, in, um, in a couple weeks. So I was trying to tell her, see she what, she, what she does, and you may do this too, I don't know. It's, she uses the internet, I'm sorry, she uses the email service provided by the internet provider, okay? So if she's got Spectrum, her email address is whatever at charter.net, which is, charter is Spectrum's email service that they offer. Well, you don't have to use that. You're better off, especially in the world today, to get an email that you either, an online service that you either pay for or it's free. So I pay for Office 365 from Microsoft. So my email is powertoolswiththread at outlook.com because Outlook is the email service provided by Microsoft. They also have Hotmail, but I don't do that. But I use Office, so it's, it's Outlook.com. I was used to it when I was in the military. I'm happy with it. It works great. It's fine. If you don't pay for a service, you can get a Gmail address. But Gmail is online only. It doesn't matter who your internet service provider is. You can keep that Gmail address for as long as you live. You never have to change it. So now she's all wound up because she's going to have to change her email if she changes from Spectrum, but she can't afford Spectrum anymore. You know, and she says, well, maybe Google can provide my internet. And I said, they don't do that. They're not an internet service provider. You have to, and it's so hard, y'all, to, to discuss, you know, and she's at that stage where she she realizes she doesn't understand and she says okay okay yeah I get it I get it and I'm, I'm like no she doesn't get it because I've explained this to her before 
So, you know, she's looking, I don't know who else. I could call Infinity or whatever. And I said, look, because she's seen those little trucks running around. <laughs> I said, why don't you Google internet service providers in my zip code? And that was a bit of a stretch. And I said, well, hold on. So I got my laptop and I Googled internet service providers in her area. And one of them is a, a local county cable company. They offer an internet. Oh, I'll call them. Because, you know, she feels more comfortable using somebody local. I said, Mom, that means now you've got to decide. Do you want to go back on cable? Or, you know, if you're streaming, I, you know, I don't know if she's got Netflix or anything like that. I don't know. I've got to call her today. She's not an early bird, so... I'll call her here in a little while and I'll figure out exactly what her needs are and then I'll call the cable company and then we'll three-way call with mom and we'll get them all sorted out. But it's hard, you guys, for, you know, it's, it's hard. I get it. Anybody with aging parents, you probably have been going through the same thing trying to figure all that out. If you guys have any um, suggestions about that, let me know. It can be a bit of a challenge. She lives in Tennessee, so she's not close. And her husband has heart trouble. It's only a matter of time, you guys. And it's only a matter of time. <laughs> I have a half brother from her. He's up in Wisconsin, but he he's let's see he's 60 almost 62 he just had a huge stroke um, within the last year or so maybe it was a year ago he had a big stroke and his wife uh, takes he's he you know he can't drive he can but it, he shouldn't kind of thing he's not a hundred percent and so they are in no way able to help take care of mom as she ages once her husband passes. So Keith and I have been talking about what are we going to do. She's too agile and with it for assisted living. She's not there yet. She's going to live to be 90 or more. Healthy. Cantankerous. <laughs> See, plugging along here. I love having something cut and ready to sew. I, if I don't have something ready to sew in the morning, I feel like I'm not getting something done. But I can look back at the start of the day, even if I don't stitch another thing, because I got a lot going on. Uh, at least I got some stitching done, and that makes me happy. And then I come back the next day and I'm like, oh, look how far along I've gotten. I'm going to cut the next animal today for uh, Fab Farm in Elizabeth Hartman. I'll get that done. We've talked about probably getting one of those outdoor buildings and converting it into a little home for her, putting it out back. You know. I mean, there's nothing, she's she's too independent to, she ain't living in my house, y'all. That ain't happening. <laughs> I don't have the room. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> that would not be good for anybody. <laughs> At all. So she needs, uh, and independence. Aging parents, you guys. Y'all have been through it or you're fixing to go through it just like I am. You gotta think about those things. What a nice way to spend the morning. I'm almost out of coffee. My coffee's kind of cold. 
we are fixing to be busy with travel. Busy. Busy, busy. I've got a bunch of videos that I've made that I have not published. I get confused with that, too, because I forget. You know, did I... I know I did that on camera. Did I publish? You know, I gotta go back and look. <laughs> Let me do this here. That way, y'all don't have to watch me straddle. <laughs> um, but I've got videos I gotta edit and get out. I've got one due for designs by Juju coming up. Oh, there's my Harley dog. She wants in. Get her biscuit. Keith takes them out through the back, brings them in through the front. My Harley dog, she's an old lady. She's, she's, uh, she'll be, she'll be, let's see, she was born in 07. She's old. Just like that tote bag. <laughs> Our neighbor next door came over, collected eggs while we were gone. There's my 30 minutes. So I'm going to finish pressing these and trimming them and set it aside and get busy with the rest of my day. But the neighbor comes over, collects the mail. They get free eggs out of the deal, so that's not bad. Keith saw this thing on Facebook where he um, took a drill with a big long bit and drilled a big fat hole through a head of cabbage. <laughs> and then hung the cabbage <laughs> with a piece of rope in, uh, in the chicken coop. And he hung it there before we left. <laughs> Those chickens didn't want nothing to do with it for a little while. <laughs> and then we came back and I said, is that cabbage still there? He goes, nope, it's gone. <laughs> I said, where did you hear about that? He said, I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> it's hilarious. Listen to my dog. Keith's telling her to be quiet. Good morning. Good morning. You need to put your label on your shirt. Oh, I do? My label's sticking out of my shirt? Yeah. Oh, I can't have that on camera. Thank you. You got a red for your neck. Come on. They come in from their first out. And they get, um, they get a pepperoni, a piece of pepperoni. They get a little bacon treat, and then they get a little chew stick, a little rawhide chew stick. I only buy the real rawhide. Um, I'm not a fan of that fake stuff. Uh, dogs are carnivores, as far as I'm concerned. So we buy the real rawhide, and, uh, Never once have I had to have my dog's teeth cleaned. They are shiny, shiny white. All right, you guys. I'm going to finish this up and then get the day started. So thank you for spending time with me. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you get some sewing done. It's good for the soul, good for the mind, good for the body. All right. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.